Greens. It's Ask Susan Sunday live right here on Congruent Living. Congruent Living for seekers, shapeshifters, creatives, star seekers, stardusts, whatever it is, whoever it is that's asking for more, more beyond this reality, more with their lives and their living. Well, you've come to the right place. Susan Lazar Hart here. Hey, Erica, the creator of Congruent Living Coaching, a six-month program in which we actually work together, you and me, uh, meeting every other week to create the life and living you've been asking for, one that actually is exploding way beyond this reality and so much more. Hey, Patricia. Hey, Brenda. Everybody's come on in. The peeps are coming in. I'm so excited. Yay. Good morning. Good morning, Patricia. Tell people where you're from. Talk amongst yourselves. Tag a friend. Tell them to get on in here. Uh, the topic today is about kindness. The awareness I had in reaching out to uh, everyone who's in congruent living, who is, is touching somebody, who's touching somebody, who's touching somebody is, are, you know, are you willing, hey Trisha, are you willing to be kind to you? Right? How many of you are doing for others, are being for others, are creating for others? Hey Anne-Marie, welcome, welcome. And none of that is actually a kindness to you because we know that any creative energy begins with you, begins from your heart space, begins from you, right? You, the infinite being, you who created a body, you who chose to, this time to live on this planet right now, right? So my question, hey Eureka, is, are you actually creating in a way that's kind to you? Or are you bucking up against what you think you're supposed to be doing, how you're supposed to be being, who you're supposed to be being, what you're supposed to be being, did I miss anything? <laughs> hey Janie, welcome, welcome. Because it's in everything you be and do and say, it, if it's not a kindness to you, if it doesn't bring you joy, if there aren't any awarenesses of, oh, hey Karen, huh, so I wonder what this would create. Is, is, it, is it kind to you? You know, when you hear yourself go over something that isn't working, is that kind to your creation? Is that kind to you, the being, is that kind to the people that you're with? You know, how many of us go on automatic, right? Uh, we're not even aware that we're speaking something maybe our mothers used to say, or our fathers used to say, or our bosses used to say, right? How many of you uh, search for validation before you're actually choosing for you? Ah, Ingrid says, great topic, yay! Uh, exactly what I'm looking for in my life. Absolutely, that is it. And the thing is, I love the way you said that, because who we be is kind, right? We are innately joyous and kind. And so it's once you kind of have that awareness, once you surrender, if I might use that word, to that awareness of like, wow, I, I'm innately creative, I'm innately kind, I'm actually innately joyous. So where is it that I'm stopping those energies? Where, where have I hidden those energies? Where have I put those energies aside? Right. So I've been playing with this for the last couple of days. When I hear myself complain about something or go into automatic, because maybe that's the way I used to be or that's what I used to say, I stop and I ask myself, oh, is, is any of that kind to me? Right. When I'm playing with my business and, and asking questions, Am I asking them from a place of negativity? Am I asking them from a place of what I've decided something should be? Because none of that is kind to your business contributing to you because you're already telling your business this is the way you should be, right? It's the same way when if you're a child and somebody tells you the way you should be and here you just went and did something what you thought was really yummy and delicious and fun and a contribution and they're saying, no, we don't actually do that in this house. We don't actually contribute like that in this house. I remember my, one of my brothers was killed in a car accident. I must have been about 10 and I wanted to do something really nice for my mom. So I went into the, the, the room that the children were not supposed to be in and I took a vase that was all dusty and I filled it with hot water and the whole thing smashed to smithereens, right? And this was all before going to school, right? And my mom didn't talk to me for a week. And I, I know as an adult what she was going through and the loss she was going through. She told me that she was teaching me a lesson. Right? Do you get that? So 
as a child, what do you take home to you, to your heart, when you, you, you think you're doing something really wonderful for somebody and it actually doesn't work out the way you thought it would, might work out, and then you're punished for the thought, the emotion, the action. You see how, how you might be confused about what kindness is? Right. In her mind, she was being kind in teaching me a lesson and punishing me. For me, I was just like, oh, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, none of that ever made sense to me. Right. Thankfully, that's who I be. <clears throat> but take this moment, have a re-listen and ask yourself, is there anywhere in your childhood that you were actually entrained and taught not to be kind? Not to be kind to you, not to be kind to somebody else. That if you're kind, people take advantage of you. Uh, if you're kind, you're showing weakness. Right? Think about that and, and just check in with yourself as you go through your day and ask yourself, what is being kind to me? What does that look like? What does that take? Hey, Patricia, thanks so much. I see your question. Uh, when I choose from me, I feel that, sorry. I, I, <laughs> this glass is time. Okay, here we go. When I choose for me, I feel bad for the other person. Oh, okay. Again, so great. Uh, let's just finish the sentence and we'll go back to that. It's as if I'm choosing for me and against them. What can I do to not feel like that? Okay, cool. So that's a who, that's a who does that belong to and at what age was I taught that? Right? So take some, you know, I'm a really big believer in writing things down, any thoughts. Just write them down. All right, take some time with yourself today, Patricia, and everybody else who, who has that as well. The thing is, nobody can make you feel anything. All right. Truth, no one can make you feel anything. When I choose for me, I feel bad for other people. How much are you picking up in other people's universes? How much are you picking up from them? I just picked up a hair. <laughs> How much are you picking up from other people's universes? What they want you to do for them. So, truth. Hey, Sandy, are you feeling bad, Patricia? Or are you aware of other people's designs on you? Of other people's expectations of you? Of other people's demands of you? And how much judgment do they have in their universe of you actually choosing for you first? So that's the, that, let me know, is this is ringing for anybody? You know, are we, in a, are, are we in the right lane here? Let me see some hearts or thumbs up or just a comment like, hell yeah. That happened, yeah, that, that, that was me. That's the way I was brought up, right? Because if you're brought up with, with a, a, a hook, right? So every time, you know, when, you're, when people are fishing, they put a hook in the water and the fish bites and you pull the fish up. And then some people send the fish back and other people just kill the fish and eat it. So how much, as a child, did you bite the hook when somebody said, this is what being kind is and it actually, you actually killed that kindness in you? which is a lie because it's always there, right? It's always there. So it's, it's not what can I do to not feel like that because then you're living in polarity. You see, if you're, if you're oh, I get, I'm getting lots of thumbs up. Then you're living in polarity. If you say, I feel like this, what do I do not to feel like that? Let it go, right? Because we're taught to work on what it, the not stuff. I, I do not want to feel like this. I do not want to think like this. I do not want to be like this. I do not want to weigh this much. I do not want to have this little money. I do not, do not, do not. And when, when we do that, we're working with the past and that's not kind to us or our business. We're telling everything, hold, wait, oh, whoa, 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 hold on, wait, let me get through the do nots. See, is that truthly, is that your reality? Or is that somebody else's? Is, was, is that a way of this reality holding you back from the magical being of who you truly be. Ooh, I got lots of hearts and thumbs up. Patricia, let me know how that rings for you. It's really, <coughs> pardon me. It's really about taking a focused look on whatever that is and asking, huh, so does any of this bring me joy? No, okay, well, who you are is truly joyous. Who you are is truly creative. Okay, cool. Uh, who am I buying this for? Where did I buy this? At what age did I buy this? And how's it serving me now? If something doesn't serve you, let it go. Right? Let it go. And ask, huh, so I wonder how I can be with this information. Like yesterday when I was, you know, I, I found myself being tired and grouchy at, at, towards in the evening. And one of my kids just said, 
are you tired, Mom? And I'm like, yeah, actually I am. And this is what's going on for me. This is what I, I, I thought I would get done today, and, and I didn't. And, and it's kind of weighing on me, and thanks for asking, and let's just let it go and enjoy each other, enjoy our company. You get the difference, right? It's not, it's not real. None of it's real. Who you are, who you be, is the joyous, creative, juicy, infinite seeker. That's, that's who you be, coming from your heart, right? Yeah, nothing else is really relative. And it's not your relative either. <laughs> uh, let's see, Aradna, hi, hi, hi. Patricia, yes, that, that the expectations of me. Aradna says, wow, Patricia says, when they say it's okay, I'm aware of their energy which is not congruent to their words. You got it, baby. So let's just take a moment. Let's like have a, a gratitude appreciation moment, Patricia, for you with that awareness. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's how we use congruency. It's, what they're saying is not congruent. How, how they're acting is not congruent. And it's not about, yes, you have that awareness. It's not actually congruent with what you're asking to create in the world. Bye-bye. Two words, bye-bye. Or one word, depending how you spell. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Thanks. You know, it's it's that easy, right? It actually is that easy. It's like, oh, that's the awareness. Okay, this actually doesn't work for me. One of the things I I'll ask myself is, you know, d does this person or does this whatever this is, is it is it a contribution to my life and living? And do they actually have any caring or kindness? to my life, for my life and living. If, it, if you're surrounded with people who aren't a contribution, find other people, right? That's the congruency. Um, Arana says, let it go. Ingrid, uh, I've, learned, I've learned somehow that being kind would end up in being me being used. Okay, that's a point of view. Who did you buy that from, right? I'm gonna put my glasses on again. Here we go. Um, so I put up barriers. Ah, now, now I'm choosing for me. Yes, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it takes, not always easy. Absolutely. Ingrid, thank you for that, right? It, it's, the, here's what, here's, you know, take it, take it for what it's worth, right? I know if something isn't easy, then I'm, I'm, I'm right at the cusp of shifting and changing everything that's not working for me. And my team, my energetic team has been like, yeah, come on, you can do this, right? And all of a sudden things line up in a totally different way. And, and it's about appreciating how they are lining up. When you appreciate, oh, how, how are these lining? Oh, this is kind of cool. This is what I've been asking for. Or, these are the people I've been asking for. Or, these are the energies I've been asking for. Cool. Yay. Oh, I got lots of hearts on that one, right? So it's, again, um, it, it, it's going to turn out totally different. The more you're willing to create a better habit, you've got this one habit, which is the way we were taught to speak, the way we were taught to be with ourselves, right? The way we were taught to sacrifice ourselves for others, right? That's a habit. So now what I'm asking you to do is create a bigger habit and ask, oh, is this being kind to me? Just like that. That's your home play, right? And please come on in with your comments. Tell me what pops for you. Um, if you're watching this on replay, come on in with your comments. Press hashtag replay and let me know. This is such a, you know, can you imagine if there was kindness in the world, more kindness and then more kindness, like little seeds of kindness? It's kindness begins with you, how you be with you. And, you know, I was a practicing uh, professional artist, painter, for years, and as a friend of mine said, you know, when you start taking yourself seriously, Susan, and presenting yourself as part of you is that artists and the other people will too. And when I understood that, that that was actually being kind to me, all of a sudden I was in galleries, I was in architectural magazines. It, it, when you hold back you, any part of you, you're not being kind to the universe, right? The world needs more of you, not less of you. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Patricia, I got a heart. Brenda, it's easy to confuse being nice and being kind. <clears throat> Only if you have a judgment on one. Right? Only if you have a judgment. You see, there, nothing is confused with anything if there's no judgment. It's just what is. 
Yesterday I took Ricky, he's gonna get a cell phone, he's never had a cell phone, and I, we're waiting in line at the Rogers store to go in. We have our cell phone that we bought, and I'm told you can't go, both of you go in, you can only go in one at a time, you have to clean your hands and put your mask on, yeah, not, not a problem, not a problem. But you can only have three people in the store. So by the time it came to be our turn, there was one other person in the store, and so I went up to the desk and I said, you know, my husband's outside, if he comes in, then there will be three people in the store. And it would be really great if he had part of this experience of hearing uh, how we're creating his plan and what to do and, and uh, getting a SIM card. And the man behind the desk was so uh, aggressive. He said, no, you cannot. If he comes in and somebody else comes in, we have to kick one of you out. And I'm not going to touch this and I'm not putting in your SIM card and I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that. In such an aggressive manner, I took my identity card and I said to him, it's so much easier to be kind. And all of a sudden, the, the other people, service people and the other person in the store turn around and they're just staring at me. And I'm just saying in a very gentle voice, it's, it's so much easier to be kind. And I must have said it with every step I took towards the exit door. It's so much easier to be kind. It's so much easier to be kind. Right? That was a kindness to me. I, I wasn't being nice to me. That was a kindness that I needed to hear from me, that there are people in the world that are kind. I, I, do, I don't have to judge this man. I totally get that he's under stress. That has nothing to do with me in my world. There's a kindness that we can be, and I was showing him in my way. Thank you so much. I actually am not choosing to work with you. I'm not choosing this store, and it's not a kindness to me. So we walked about five blocks down to another Rogers store, and we waited about an hour and a half, for our turn and the people said to us oh there's two of you you know what we'll take both of you in you're the last people in and we'll take good care of you and they did right so following the energy being kind to me being kind to Ricky what is kindness for us right because kindness generates so in the in 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 knowing where to go and how to go and who to be and how to be with yourself hey Mary your life and your living there's no confusion between nice and kind, right? Kindness is. Nice is an adjective. Kindness is. So I, I you know, I, let me know if this has assisted you uh, with your question there. Uh, I hope it did. And uh, let me see some hearts and likes. And it's just, it's a matter of being present. And the more present that you are, the more present you will be with everything that you're creating. Janie, I feel like I was raised to think that being kind to myself, yeah, was selfish, not thinking of others, only myself. Again, kindness begins with you, right? You know, even when you're on an airplane, remember the days when we were on an airplane, and they said, when you put the mask on, put the mask on you first before you put it on your child or somebody else, right? Because if you're, if you're not whole unto yourself, wholeness, right? If you're not if you're not the beingness of whole to you, can you actually be kind to anybody else, right? So when we were told you're being selfish, what they're saying is, I want you to care about me more than you care about you. How, how did that work out? Look at the world we're in right now. Some of it's yummy and some of it not so yummy. So what is being kind to you all about? Going beyond this reality or buying this reality is true and real? Okay, Ingrid, yes, changing habits into better, more contributing habits, yeah, and more congruent, more congruent habits. Congruency has to do with everything you be and say, nothing ruffles anything else, right? That's what congruent living is all about. It's, somebody asked me the other day, well, what is congruent living, Susan? I said, it's, it's about being in, in homeostasis with who you be, what you be, and how you be, so that that those surprises that we have by the universe are not actually surprises They're the universe saying, oh yeah, you wanted this, okay, it took me a little bit of time, but thanks for hanging in, thanks for continuing where you're part of the journey, here's my part of the journey for you. That's congruency, right? Yeah, and if you wanna dive deeper, come and check it out, Congruent Living Coaching. Uh, it's changing so many lives, I'm so thrilled, and I'd love to share it with you. So get on a call with me, uh, go to SusanLazarHeart.com to Congruent Living Coaching and just come on down and just let's get on a call and see what we could change together. What is not working for you can actually be congruent with total ease. 
and joy and surprises. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Mary, I said hi. Maureen, hi. Everybody's coming in. Uh, have a re-listen to this one, ladies. Uh, it's really, really, uh, the questions have been awesome. I'm so grateful for you. The, the comments have been awesome. That's what congruent living is all about. It's about living in congruency. Ask Susan Sunday is our place to have this kind of a conversation live. And I'm so grateful for all of you showing up. And uh, if you, you know, if, if there's something that you want me to touch on, just put it here in the comments and say, like some, the kindness came from a comment somebody asked me last Sunday. They said, Susan, can you talk about kindness? Right? And I was like, wow, it's such a vast topic. Where do you begin when you begin with you? How does it get any better? Join me Tuesdays and Thursdays on my personal page for our congruent quickies. We're playing with money in a totally different way than anybody actually ever thought. Money, myth, magic, or, hmm, I wonder what else is possible. So it's 11 o'clock every Tuesday and Thursday for congruent quickies. And uh, come on over to SusanLazarHeart.com. Check out Congruent Living Coaching. Check out our free resources. We're putting all the, we're making a library for you of the Congruent Quickies from June on relationships. We'll be having the Congruent Quickies from July on money. And uh, if there, again, if you want me to talk about something special on Congruent Living, this is about us. It's not about me. It's about us. What is it that we want to investigate? Where do we want to go? How do we want to go? Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Now's the time, right? Now's the time. All right, I don't see any more questions. Live boldly, love greatly, and be that fearless leader you came here to be, right? Fearless liver is one that, it, it, it's one that's kind to themselves. Uh, Ingrid says, thank you for this conversation. Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you for joining us, definitely. Mm. Hey, invite your friends in, right? Uh, how many of your friends are, have kind of shut down? And uh, it's like, oh, this is going on some more, this is going on more, well, what if there was a different way to be with who you be, what you be right now in this 10 seconds? What if this is what you've been asking for? Are you willing to create the changes that you know are possible? Would that be kind to you? Hmm, it just might be. I adore you and I will see you Tuesday, Thursdays on Congruent Living and right back here for next Sunday's Ask Susan Sunday Live. Mwah. Have an amazing one. Bye-bye.